Welcome friends and thanks for joining in. On this video we're going to kind of go through applying our crop nutrients. Here it is uh, mid-February and uh, we had a little bit of a dry spell so we were able to actually get some litter out on our crops and uh, on our fields and uh, based off of soil samples and test results. So stick around we'll go through how we read these soil samples, how we test the actual uh, chicken litter that we use for fertilizer and apply everything based on what the crops need and what the land's calling for. So hopefully this video will help you out and I hope you enjoy it. I guess the first thing to do is actually start with what you actually have in the ground. So um, honestly to me, if if you're not taking soil samples on your on your farm and in your fields to know what you actually have, you're just kind of shooting in the dark and throwing away money, uh, honestly. So about every two, three years, we soil sample everything. And so what we have displayed here is a soil sample uh, was taken last year. Um, and if you look at the main things I really focus on is the PEK, <clears throat> of course the pH, whether or not you need lime or not. And then of course, um, some of the other items as well, um, like sulfur. Uh, believe it or not, but sulfur is a, a pretty big deal. And you can see all of our land is really low in sulfur ever since the, the emissions uh, reduction um, and the smog and the pollution, etc. Um, cleaned up the air. We used to get sulfur for free when it rained, but now um, it's another product that we have to buy as farmers and put back into the ground. So, <clears throat> but if you can look here, it's kind of the soil fertility recommendations. You know, a lot of this land that we have is really poor. People farmed it and farmed it and they never, they never done anything with it um, as far as putting anything back in the land much. And so it's really run down and poor and it's taken us quite a year to even build up to this level. Um, but you can see that, we, you know, it's talking anywhere from uh, 90 pounds to 50 pounds per acre of phosphorus which is uh, phosphate and then of course 155 pounds of potash in, in some fields um, and then of course sulfur and even a little bit of boron etc so those are the things that uh, we need to add back into it um, to improve the soil all right next we'll actually look at uh, sampling <clears throat> what we'll be using to actually fertilize with which is uh, chicken litter uh, broiler litter in particular uh, broiler Litter actually has a lot more higher nutrient content than um, some of the pullet houses, etc., and the laying houses. But if you look at this test here that we did on our Salatus um, sample of litter, you look at it, it's pounds per ton. Um, basically, the far right column, second one back, it says 49 pounds of nitrogen, 41 pounds of phosphorus, and 47.8 pounds of uh, potash. So pretty good and then also you'll see the sulfur right 10.6 and you get a little boron and you get a lot of other things <clears throat> in chicken litter that you just won't get in in commercial fertilizer you have to add all that stuff individually so um, one thing with chicken litter and it's something I did not know about that I had to actually learn is chicken litter is really a slow release type fertilizer so as you can see on the column to the right where it says estimates of nutrients available pounds per ton if you notice it's roughly half of what the actual as is basis is and that's because only 24.5 pounds of nitrogen is available to the plant immediately um, as soon as the litter is on the ground and it gets some rain the other half of the nitrogen actually has to be converted and I, i'm not a chemist or a scientist in, in, in this regard so it's something about the soil organisms have to interact um, and break down the chicken litter and convert that into a usable uh, form of nitrogen that the plant can use. So six months from now, um, there's another, you know, 24.5 pounds of nitrogen per ton that the plant will be able to use. It just can't use it right now. So uh, chicken litter is actually a slow release fertilizer. And so, you know, we're putting out probably three and a half tons to the acre um, is what we're actually putting out. So, you know, you could take and multiply that by 3.5 to get the actual pounds of nutrients you're actually putting out to the acre. So hopefully that helps a little bit and explains a little bit about knowing what your ground needs versus what's actually in the, the either wise a chicken litter or commercial fertilizer that you would be using to put back into the land.
cold, wet day, so wanted to give you a walkthrough on uh, our manure spreader that we use. Um, so we've got two blind nitro 275 RS. It's got the big high flotation tires on it. Um, spreader works really, really good. Been pleased with it so far. Um, I will say that, um, you know, for us, the reason why we kind of wanted this is we wanted to use something that could actually spread heavy pack from the cattle as well as uh, the chicken litter uh, that we're spreading. And so this has uh, full vertical beaters uh, up and down and it's got the spinners at the bottom. So it does a pretty good job. I set the GPS uh, guidance for spreading width about 25 feet um, is generally what we do and then um, the other thing I like about this is the size chain I don't know if you can see it but if you look at the chain that's used to the drag it's not like the normal um, manure spreaders that you have those chains always give you a fit breaking etc um, these chains here um, they are heavy duty they'll probably I think that's one of their slogans is that it's guaranteed for life as far as the chain breaking so um, I thought about adding some extenders up here just because chicken litter is so light it is really not that heavy um, and I could actually get more material in here but so it's got a poly floor and this drags them back and um, I don't know if you can see over there but you can see my mark so I calibrated this just by really trial and error and so I basically put a mark for three tons versus four tons I know what gear I got to run in um, you raise the lift gate and turn the spreader on and it puts um, three tons out or four tons out to the acre or um, you know two tons you just have to adjust the gate so we just picked this up last year we had a rear beater um normal manure spreader and we kind of upgraded just because i was wanting to get into something that could spread the chicken litter as well so with the cost of fertilizer uh, if you can get something that's organic something like chicken litter um, it's a much better option for your fields so there you go that's a little bit um wanted to do kind of a, just a quick walk through uh, on the on the spreader that you're seeing in the videos Well friends that concludes this video. Hopefully it was helpful I didn't want to include too much information on how you do the actual calculations on the nutrients and Actually how I calibrated your spreader if anyone's got any questions or something just feel free to uh, post in the comments I'll be I'll be glad to answer um, but um, just try to admit and get a high level view of, of how this is done and, and, and what we've done. So we ended up spreading roughly about 450 tons uh, this spring uh, to cover all of our land. Didn't get a video of all of the spreading that took place. A lot of it actually took place at night just because of working. Um, it's the only time I could get to do it in the rain, etc. Um, so you've seen that uh, one area that we did there around the pond, it was actually newly cleared land. We just um, basically cleared that and sowed that. Uh, that grass is roughly about a year old, so it's kind of why it looks a little parsed. Um, it's still coming in. So, um, And if you got any questions or anything, feel free. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, don't forget to like or subscribe. Thanks.